How many people believe in the idea that the way you think has some effect on your life? That your thoughts are intimately connected to your future? So your thoughts in some way create your reality. You believe that? So how many people in this audience have a clear vision of their future? You see, you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day. Out of those 60 to 70,000 thoughts that you think in one day, 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before. So if you believe that your thoughts somehow are connected to your life, then the same thoughts always lead to the same choices. The same choices always lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the same experiences, and the same experiences produce the same emotions. And those very same emotions drive the very same thoughts. And your biology, your neurocircuitry, your neurochemistry, your neurohormones, and even your genetic expression is equal to how you think, how you act, and how you feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. So then, if you wanted to create a new personal reality, a new life, then you would have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You would have to become aware of your unconscious thoughts and observe them. You would have to pay attention to your automatic habits and behaviors and modify them. And you would have to look at the emotions you live by every single day that are connected to your past and decide if those emotions belong in your future. You see, most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. So your brain is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact of all the things you've learned and experienced to this moment. So if you wake up every morning and get out of bed on the same side, shut the alarm clock off with the same finger, shuffle into the bathroom and use the toilet like you always do, go and get a cup of coffee and drink coffee out of your favorite mug, then get in the shower and wash yourself off in the same routine way, drive to work, get to work, see the same people that push the same emotional buttons, do the same things that you've memorized and do so well, then hurry up and go home, and hurry up and check your emails, and hurry up and check your Facebook, then hurry up and go to bed. Here's my question. Did your brain change at all that day? We could say that you were thinking the same thoughts, performing the same unconscious actions, living by the same emotions, but secretly expecting your life to change. So there's a principle in neuroscience. And the principle says, nerve cells that fire together, wire together. So if you're thinking the same thoughts, making the same choices, demonstrating the same behaviors, reproducing the same experiences that stamp the same networks of neurons into the same patterns and then produce the same emotions, you're going to hardwire your brain into a very finite signature. Because as you fire and wire the same circuits in the same way, those circuits begin to become more connected. 
And by the time you're 35 years old, this is science now, we become a set of memorized behaviors, unconscious habits, automatic emotional reactions, beliefs and perceptions, and even attitudes that function just like a computer program. And if you do something over and over and over again, the repetition of those actions over time conditions your body to know how to do it well, better than your mind. And a habit is when your body knows better than your mind. Where you've done something so many times that the body now knows how to do it better than the brain. And so 95% of most people's behaviors, attitudes, thoughts, beliefs, emotional reactions are subconscious programs. So why is that important? Because you're here this week to learn new information. And every time you learn something new, you make new connections in your brain. That's what learning is. Learning is forging new synaptic connections. Physical evidence as a result of your interaction in the environment and the footprints of consciousness is called learning, making new connections. And the Nobel Prize laureate Kandel in the year 2000 found that when people learned one bit of information, they doubled the number of connections in their brain from 1,300 connections to 2,600 connections. But if they didn't review that information, if they couldn't repeat it, if they couldn't remember it, those circuits pruned apart in hours or days. So if learning is making new synaptic connections, then remembering is maintaining and sustaining those connections. And you are here this week to learn vital information about creating a future and be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memories of the past. Because if you are not defined by some vision that is bigger than you and you are not passionate about that vision, then you're left with the old hardware of the past in your brain and you will be predictable in your life. So would you agree then? New thoughts, new information should lead to new choices. New choices should lead to new behaviors. And new behaviors should create new experiences. And new experiences should produce new emotions. And those new emotions should drive new thoughts. And that's called evolution. So if your brain is a record of the past, and you don't have a vision of the future, then you are living in the past. And you will never arrive at that new future. So then if you wake up in the morning and you are not being defined by a vision that's bigger than you and it doesn't get you out of bed and inspire you into possibility and you get up living from the old hardware of the past and the old emotions stored in your body, do you know what's going to happen to you? You're going to wake up and you're going to open your eyes and you're going to see the same people and go to the same places and do the exact same thing at the exact same time. And the moment you open your eyes, all of a sudden now, it's your external environment that's controlling how you think and feel. Because you have a neurological network in your brain for every person you know, every place that you go, everything that you own, everything that you do. And the moment you open your eyes and you see the same people and go to the same places and do the exact same thing at the exact same time, it's your external environment that's turning on different circuits in your brain, causing you to think equal to everything that you know. And you told me you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny. And as long as you're th thinking equal to your environment, you keep creating the same life to change, 
To truly change is to think greater than your environment, to think greater than the circumstances in your life, to think greater than the conditions in your world. And every great person in history knew this, whether it was Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, the Wright brothers, Joan of Arc. They all had a vision, couldn't see it, couldn't smell it, couldn't taste it, couldn't feel it, but it was alive in their mind. It was so alive in their mind that they began to live as if that future reality was happening in the present moment. And so the moment you stop making the same choices that you always make, get ready because it's going to be uncomfortable. And that's the moment you are heading towards the new self. And we call it stepping into the river of change. But now, remember, 95% of who you are is your body as the mind. You know, you've done something enough times that your body does it better than your brain. So you may actually complain unconsciously because your body does it all the time. And all of a sudden you say, no complaining. No more blaming, no more feeling sorry for myself, no more talking about other people. I'm going to stop. You know what happens, don't you? The body starts sending signals to the brain. The body's been conditioned that way. And all of a sudden, you start hearing the thoughts in your head that say, why don't you start tomorrow? Tomorrow's a better day. This is too hard for me. I can't change. Something's wrong with me. It's my mother's fault. It's my ex-husband's fault. It's my ex-wife's fault. I'm this way because of this event. Or the most important one, this doesn't feel right. And the moment you respond to that thought is if it's true. That thought leads to the same choice which leads to the same behavior, that creates the same experience, that produces the same emotion, and the person says, this feels right. That feels familiar. Going from the old self to the new self, stepping into that void, stepping into that uncertainty, is the biological, the neurological, the chemical, the hormonal genetic death of the old self. And people will say to us, well, in that unknown, I can't predict my life or my future. And we always say the same thing to them. The best way to predict your future is to create it, not from the known, but from the unknown. And when you and I get comfortable in the place of the unknown, that's where the magic happens. And it never happens in the known.